Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Thank you for joining us today. Jesus said in John 14, 21, the one who keeps my commandments is the one who really loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and I will make myself real to him. God makes his presence known to you when you choose to act in love. God is love and there is no fear in him. So when his presence manifests, then fear cannot stay. Join us today as Kenneth Copeland continues our study about living a fear-free life. Discover that following God's commandment is acting in love and how that leads to manifesting his presence where all fear is cast out. We want to go back into our uh, seven steps to never being afraid again. And we were down through the fifth step. The first one, come to the absolute understanding that we are already delivered from fear. Fear has no right nor authority over us. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 said at the cross that Jesus delivered us from fear and from being subject to bondage through the fear of death. And then of course, Romans 8, 15. The second step was resist the spirit of fear knowing that fear is not okay. Fear is sin. Revelation 21, 8, Joshua 1, 9, 1 John 3, 2 through 4. Then of course, 2 Timothy 1, 5 through 7, we've not been given the spirit of fear. So if we've not been given the spirit of fear, we don't have any business with it. Amen. I don't want something that didn't come from God. Do you? Jesus is my Lord. He's my savior. I'm walking with him. I don't like things that are, you know, that are, are, are not respectful to him. I don't like, I don't want to receive anything that doesn't come from him. He is my Lord. He's my head. He's the one I receive from. So if it doesn't come from him or through him, I don't want it. And we've not been given the spirit of fear. We've been given power and love and a sound mind. Number three, Faith is, quote, filtered or, or decontaminated through love. Galatians 5, 5 and 6, faith worketh by love. Ephesians 3, 17, being rooted and grounded in love. Then we went to Jude, verse 20 and 21, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourself in love. So now that we see that exercising in the spirit, praying in the spirit in other tongues functions in the realm of love and keeping us in the love of God. And then 1 John 5, 18, whosoever is born of God sinneth not or is not living a sin practicing lifestyle. We make mistakes. We miss it, miss God to certain get misdirection and so forth. But our heart is to walk with God and to walk in God. You know, real people, born again people are not looking for a way to sin and get away with it. No, no. I mean, even people that get caught up in bondage and get caught up in, in addictions and, and so forth. Uh, you, you'll find that, at least I've found over the years that that uh, even in the case, even in a case like that, somebody gets caught up in something that's just outright sin, but their heart is condemning them over it and, and their, their conscience is, is just tearing them apart over the thing, but they've yielded to their flesh and, and particularly if they don't know how to get out of it, there's a lot of people that say, well, dear Lord, Brother Copeland, I just fasted and I prayed and, and I prayed and I prayed and didn't nothing happen. Well, without 
proper acting on the word, taking advantage of the weapons of our warfare, and learning how to resist and go against the flesh and win, then your flesh will just keep you bound up, just keep, just keep you swallowed up in that thing. And most people get over, it if, when they get in a situation like that, instead of running to God in the first place, they get, get embarrassed and, and get to where they run from God. And then you're trying to protect yourself, keep anybody from finding out about it and all that. And the more you're operating in fear, the deeper the thing gets. But even at that, that person is not, that person is not trying to sin and get away with it. You understand the difference there of what I'm talking about? Now here, he, he's describing that. And in that scripture, it said, he keepeth himself. Well, we found out in the book of Jude what that's talking about. He keeps himself in love. Perfected love casteth out fear, praise God. And so the scripture said that wicked one touches him not. Amen. Boy, that's good news too. Then number four is receive the love. It's an act of receiving what God has done for you just the same as it was when you got born again. You had to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The same thing is true with anything that God has done for us. We take the word of God on it and then we actively as an act of our will, an act of decision, and then releasing our faith on it, we receive it and we begin to alter our lifestyle to fit whatever we have just received. Amen. Now, when you, you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, from that moment, you told everybody you were a Christian. See, with the heart, believe it, man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made to it. So confession needs to be made to John 17, 23, that God loves us as much as he does Jesus. Well, Jesus prayed that and said that. Then in the 26th verse, it said, the love wherewith you, God, love me, Jesus, may be in them and I in them, Jesus said. So we receive that. I receive that Jesus said that. I receive the fact that you love me as much as you do Jesus. I don't understand that. Amen. It looks like God's getting a bad deal. But you turn over to the book of Philippians and it, and it said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be called equal with God. See? He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't call it robbing God to, to stand and confess his equality with God. I'm his son and he's my father. If you've seen me, you've seen him. Hallelujah. They said, wow, that's blasphemous. No, he said, I ain't robbing God. I know who I am. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now it said, let that mind be in you. That mind won't just get in you because that goes right straight across all religion. It goes right straight across all your natural feelings. It goes right straight across all, all the fear-based ideas that anybody's ever had. So you have to adopt that. You have to let that mind be in you and you have to begin to confess, whoa, I'm the child that God loves. Hallelujah. That's what the apostle John did. He said, I'm the apostle that God loves. I'm the one he loves. Well, he wasn't singling himself out to be something bigger than anybody else. He just caught a revelation of that and he confessed it. That's the reason he's the one that wrote in 1 John chapter 5, or 4 rather, in the 15, 16 verses, whosoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God and God is love. See, there's the whole thing. Well, he heard Jesus pray that. That's the reason he wrote it in his gospel. He heard that prayer. He, he received that prayer. And he, he wrote it word for word in, in his gospel. Amen. So our confession then is our receiving what he has already said about us. And I'll tell you what, it'll turn you right square, absolutely. It'll just run cross grain of most people that hear it. 
Well, I don't care. I mean, they got the grain out there. I would just run across it. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, you just step on my toes every time I come to church. Well, you got them stuck out there, dear Lord. Did you ever notice two people walking together, you can't step on one another's toes? Figure that out for yourself. Praise the Lord. <laughs> now, receive the love. And then number five was believe the love. First John 4, 15 and 16, we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And you know, right in the midst of those verses of Scripture there in 1 John 4 and 5, we find Scripture stuck in there like this, find, find statements stuck in there like this, that we have confidence that whatsoever we ask according to His will, He gives it to us. Isn't that amazing? That kind of confidence is is fitted right into believing the love. That's easy to believe when you realize you have his favor. Amen. But fear-based religion never, never ever says anything about the favor of the Lord. Did you ever notice this? Someone that says, now, Brother Copeland, I believe God heals, but then, now he doesn't heal everybody. Now, what's coming next? You, you, you never hear this. Now, Brother Copeland, I do believe that God heals, but now he doesn't heal everybody, but he always heals me. That don't fit there, does it? <laughs> somebody that says that is always one that he doesn't. It's always somebody else he heals, not me. Why? Because the first statement was unbelief. Well, you're not going to mix unbelief and faith all in the same sentence. I mean, the next sentence is going to be unbelief too. And he don't ever heal me. I don't understand why. I mean, dear Lord, I'm just as good as the next guy. <laughs> well, we just don't believe in that healing much, Brother Copeland. Well, you ain't going to be bothered with it. There's no use you even talking about it. <laughs> now then, believe the love. And then we subtitle this with subtitle A, that was step five, subtitle A, believe it's in you now. B, believe it never fails, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. C, believe it is God. It's not the love of God, it is love who is God. Love who is God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Spirit of God, or by the Spirit of love. Amen. Now, let's go into number six. Use or practice the love. Make the quality forever no turn back, no arguing decision to live the life of love and faith. Use and practice the love of God. Practice loving God. Now, let's go through a set of scriptures here. Go back over to 1 John. You need to read the book of 1 John carefully meditate on it over and over again, read it from different translations, just absorb this book because it is the centerpiece of what we're talking about. 1 John 2, 5. Whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected or developed, comes to full course. The Amplified Translation says, is allowed to run its full course in your life. Hereby know we that we are in him. Now that is generally true concerning all the promises of God. Keeping the word, acting on the word, confessing the word, believing the word. The word is the bottom line to our prayer life. 
You know, we start off, <laughs> we start off with the answer. We start off where other people hope to some of days get. But God's Word is His part of our prayer life. We start off with what He said. That's the answer to the prayer. And then pray the prayer based on what He's already said. Well, now that's certainly true. Whosoever does that, in him verily is the love of God perfected. But this verse of Scripture is speaking specifically, look at verse 4. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But so he's talking about keeping the commandment. What commandment is he talking about? Is he talking about the Ten Commandments? Well, he's not, he's not putting them out of the picture. But Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself and love God, and you fulfill all the commandments. Huh? Huh? So to love one another is our commandment, even as Christ, God for Christ's sake loved us, to believe on the name of his son Jesus and love one another. And that is the commandment about which he is speaking here. If that commandment is first and foremost, if we've done just what we've talked about here, we have made a quality decision that our lifestyle from here on is to live the life of love and live the life of faith, praise God, then... In doing so, as you walk in that, as you keep that, as that develops in you, you're not going to steal. You're not going to break the commandments of God. You can't because you're walking and living in faith and love. Just to live by faith. Amen. Well, faith worketh by love. Now then, whoso keepeth that word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Now look in the fourth chapter at the 12th verse. 4.12. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God, who is love, dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected or developed or brought to full stature in us. So you see, where, where, you, you see where we need to use the word practice to practice the love of God? This is our lifestyle. This is what we do all the time. We don't just go along in our natural little way until some situation comes up where we need to, uh-oh, practice love. No, if you don't practice it all the time, think about it all the time, be involved with it all the time. When that situation arises, you will think about it two days after you just knocked that guy stupid. <laughs> You'd be like my son John was when he was a little boy. He came to me and he said, Daddy, how come is it I don't ever feel like repenting until after I sin? <laughs> Amen. But once you make the decision, I keep using that phrase, a decision of quality. That's a quali that is a decision about which there's no more argument and there's no more retreat. I mean, there's no turning back. This thing's forever. It is a commitment. The thing that, the thing that solidly puts a decision in place is the written word of God and that communion cup. Amen. You put the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus on the table and you have the scriptures and you have the decision. You have all the elements of success. And then the power that's in the word, the power that's in the blood, the power that is in his resurrection, praise God, begins to work for you. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you, you're on your way then. Praise God. Now, practice the love. 1 John 2, 5. 1 John 4, 12. Let's read that 12th verse again. No man hath seen God who is love at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Now, look at the 18th verse. There is no fear in love, but perfected love casteth out fear. Can you see what's happening during this process? You're praying in the Holy Ghost. 
You've made a decision to walk in love and to practice love, to walk in faith and practice faith. And here you are practicing this on a daily basis. If you're practicing love, if you're thinking of ways that you can love somebody, if you're thinking of ways that you can love and serve your heavenly father, if you're thinking of ways to practice love all the time, guess who you're not thinking about? Me, my problems, and what they did to me. Now, if you've done this and you're doing that and, you, and, and they have done something to you, I guess who's going to come up on the top of the list for you to practice this love on? Yeah. Sister prune face over there that's been in, your, been in your hair ever since you've been in that church. She's not your enemy. She's not your enemy. Poor miserable thing. I mean, she, she, she's hurting and you just happened to be the closest one. She spit and you were in the way. I mean, amen. Well, Brother Copeland, it seemed like to me it was worse than that. Well, if you hadn't have been there, she'd have been on somebody else, wouldn't she? So you have to learn, you have to start thinking like that. And as you're practicing this, start thinking love and faith thoughts about her to start with or about that person. And it may, not, it, 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 it may be a while before you have any business making contact with them. You just love. You just go ahead and practice. And after all, that's what we're doing right now. We just practice in here, <laughs> praise the Lord. You've got your own self to deal with here for a while. And you, you begin to build that up, build that up. You begin to think of ways you can bless that person. Now, don't try to think of ways how they are going to respond. You ain't got any idea how they're going to respond. Forget that. Get that off of your mind. You know, most of the problems that, that we get involved in are things that we sit there and get to thinking about. And that, that, li that, little, that, that little thing that goes over in your mind all the time, you, talking to you all the time. You got that little, the, little voice going on in there all the time. Well, I'm going to do this and they're going to do that and they'll do that and they'll do this and they'll do that. And, oh, look at that truck. I just got hit by a truck. I'm rolled over in the ditch. My tires are upside down. Going jib, 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 jib. I mean, it just goes on all the time. The word says, bring every thought into obedience, cast down imaginations and reasonings that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God or against your knowledge, you, what you know about God and the word and what you're practicing. You have to get active in that all the time. Get that thing that is unruly and bring it into the confines of Jesus. Get that thing where it talks love all the time. Now then, are you with me so far? Now, 1 John 2, 5, 1 John 4, 12, 1 John 4, 15 through 18, the perfecting the love of God casteth out fear. Now look in the fifth chapter. Let's look at uh, 421. Verse 21 of the fourth chapter. This commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Now don't just breeze past that. Stop and think about that a minute. He who is practicing love, he's loving God. What? Well, I'm going to read this in a minute. I'll get ahead of myself a little bit here. Loving God, loving one another is keeping the commandment of God. So loving one another is loving God. You're not just on your knees saying, oh, God, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. That's good. That's wonderful. You ought to do that. Amen. And as you do that, as you confess that love for him, that'll just grow and grow and grow. But actually, Obeying his commandment is loving him. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my word. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith and the one-year Bible plan every day. Keep up with culturally relevant articles and free downloads on the blog. Click through interactive issues of the BVOV magazine with links to videos and further reading. Follow along with the question of the day. Face tough questions with answers based firmly on the Bible. Get a faith boost by reading testimonies of real life success stories from people just like you. 
KCM.org meets you where you are. Imagine a life untouched by fear. What could you accomplish if you weren't afraid? How far could your faith in God take you? Learn how you can live without fear with 7 Steps to Walking Fear-Free, an audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. But Jesus already delivered you from the spirit of fear at the cross. When he defeated death, he destroyed the root of fear and all of the curse that is attached to it. Fear of lack, sickness, disappointment, death doesn't have a hold on you anymore. Decontaminate your faith by renewing your mind to the Word of God. Even in the midst of pressure and tribulation, you can be of good cheer. Believe and receive the love of God. Draw near to Him and fear has to flee. It's time to live a life of love and joy and truly walk in freedom from all fear. Discover how to live the fearless life that Jesus made possible for you. Request your copy of 7 Steps to Walking Fear-Free, an audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland. A fear-free life is your covenant right today. Go to our website, kcm.org slash TV special, or call 800-600-7395. Free offer good for 60 days. Outside of the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. When you were born again, God gave his love and his faith so you could live your life in victory just like he does. God is love and there is no fear in him. That's why his faith always works because faith works by love. If you want to experience the same faith success that God has, then fear has to be cast out. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have an excellent teaching that will give you practical steps to get fear out of your life. It's called Seven Steps to Walking Fear Free. In this teaching, Brother Copeland shows you seven steps from God's Word to keep your life free from the influence of fear. Jesus has redeemed you from the curse of the law, and that curse included fear in all of its forms. Put these principles of God's word to work in your life today. And as you listen to this message, remind yourself of how much God loves you. Your faith will be strengthened and you will live the fearless life Jesus made possible for you. This audio teaching is available as a CD or digital download. Go to kcm.org to request your free copy today. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, this is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Find out more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith. Visit our website, kcm.org.